Hello, this is David Hillier here and I'm going to be presenting a very short video on Chapter 6, Section 6.2 of my textbook Corporate Finance. The topic of this video is net present value, uh, no it's not net present value, it's payback period. And payback period is much maligned in finance. It's If you read most textbooks, including mine actually, uh, we, t we tend to make a big deal about its weaknesses. However, research has shown that more than 50% of European companies, and in particular in the UK, uh, the, they find payback period uh, is used. So th this is something that uh, seems a bit of an anomaly that <coughs> Although academics say payback is uh, dreadful, it has lots of weaknesses, it's probably the weakest of all the investment appraisal methods, yet it is used in the majority of companies. In my practical experience, I actually find that uh, payback is ubiquitous, it's, it's used everywhere. And uh, over time... I've actually come to really like this method, and I haven't written that in my 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 book, but there there are a, a a lot of nice characteristics to payback, and and I will cover those um, in this video. But what is the payback period? Well, the payback period is is simply telling you how long will it take to get your money back. If I invest one hundred. How many years or how many periods does it take to get my money back? So let's, if we look at a, a very simple example, so if we have time in this column, we have cash flow here, and we can start off with time zero, one, two, three, four, five, and the cash flow minus 100, and we have 40, 40, 40. 40. How long does it take to get your money back? Well, it takes more than two years because after two years you've got 80, but it doesn't take as long as three years because after three years you have 120. So the payback period is between two and three years. Now, how do you work out what fraction of year uh, you actually get the money back? Now, the thing is, in practice, what what happens is that your company will say, we've got a, a minimum payback period of three years. So if the payback period for a project is greater than three years, then you don't accept it. If it's less than three years, you do accept it. Now, that's simple. But in academic texts and um, books, we want to find diffraction. We want to get down to a bit more detail. So if we were to say, what is the payback period of this project? Then the way you calculate it is you accumulate the cash flows. And I can accumulate the cash flows here. Now, I wouldn't normally do this because you can actually work out in your head it's like 2.5 years. But the cumulative cash flow is it's minus 100. It's minus 100 plus 40. Minus 60 plus 40 is minus 20. So you have 20 until you make your money back. But the next cash flow is 40. So if we want to work out the fraction, then the fraction is simply the, the amount that's still to go divided by the actual cash flow that takes place in uh, the next year. So you see the fraction is 0 0.5. Now notice that I put a minus sign before that. So for this, the payback period is 2.5 years. Really very straightforward. Now, as I said, I, I like this method. Um, but before we, we go on to discuss that, um, let's talk about its weaknesses. The first thing is that we don't take into account time value of money. We don't consider the risk of the cash flows, and we don't consider the timing of the cash flows. So, comparing this to net present value, which is what I covered in section 6.1 and has been covered in another video, you, you, right away you say, well, theoretically, it's suboptimal. 
we're not thinking about risk and we're not thinking about uh, the timing of uh, the cash flows. A cash flow that occurs in year one is given the, se- the e- same weighting as a cash flow that occurs in year five. Also, if you have a, a corporate payback uh, threshold of, say, three years, given that the project would be rejected if it didn't make any money back within three years, then you're necessarily ignoring any cash flows that take place uh, after that three-year period. Again, that's a weakness. Why? Because you're not using all available information. And the final weakness is that the standard, the threshold for the payback, the corporate threshold, is completely arbitrary. It's, uh, it's chosen by the company. There is no reason why a three-year threshold is any better than a five-year threshold or a two-year threshold. This is just chosen from within the company. So there's very little science under underlying this method. Uh, it doesn't use all available information and it doesn't actually use any of the principles of uh, the time value of money, which we, fi- you know, we basically treat as a foundation for all of finance. So those are weaknesses. So why then do companies use payback period? That's that's the main question. Um, well, they use payback period for a number of reasons, but the, the main one is, is that it's, it's incredibly simple. It's uh, If you have a manager that doesn't have a finance background and you're trying to explain to the manager that Uh, a particular project is good, the first thing that that manager will want to understand is, well, how long is it going to take till we get our money back? So payback tells tells you that. It's nice. It's also, if you can compare payback period to um, net present value, net present value, you have to calculate the discount rate. You have, you know, and and that takes a while, uh, or it it takes quite a bit of effort to calculate discount rate. It's also... The net present value, with all the calculations, with the time value of money, for very small projects, you may actually just have a decision rule within a company that says, look, you know, if it's a very small project, you know, we'll accept it. The, the investment's not going to have an impact on our overall um, financial position. So if there are small projects, as long as you make your money back within three years, then that's fine. So it's, it's, that's simple. That, that That's good. It's also very good for companies that are desperately short of cash or ha- the, those that have capital rationing because the the whole question of how long does it take for us to get our money back, sh- we need to get the money back within a, a, a certain period. What that is saying is that you need money up front so that you can invest it again. Having money tied up in long-term assets when you have no you have no money or very little money is suboptimal. So, from a strategic perspective, payback period is quite good. I I like payback period. What tends to happen in practice is that, well, in in many many European companies that I know, that what companies will do is they'll use a combination of payback period and MPV and also another method called internal rate of return which I'll cover in a different lecture, different video. So the decision rule then becomes a little bit more complex. So if you were, say for example, you were combining MPV and payback, then the question would be then that, uh, well, is MPV greater than zero? And do you get your money back in less than, say, five years? <coughs> so in that particular case, you are ensuring that the money uh, you're making your money back within five years and also that the project, which might have a lifetime longer than five years, is going to create value. Now, you might think, well, wait a minute. If Surely the MPV needs to be greater than zero for payback to be acceptable? Well, no, because what you might actually have is you might have a situation where the total cash flows may last for a long time, but 
the amount of money, uh, the amount, of the the length of time it takes to make your money back, is uh, a shorter period, and it all comes down to the time value of money because you discount future cash flows. So let's just say, for example, I'm going to delete this. Um, I'll clear this, and let's just say that the discount rate R is equal to twenty five percent. It's a risky project. So what's the present value of the cash flows? Present value of the cash flow is just 100 divided by 1 plus the discount rate. And I'm going to make that an absolute cell reference to the power 0. I'm going to copy this all the way down. Now, we know our payback period is 2.5 years. Does this project uh, have a positive NPV? Well, let's just sum the cash flows. The, the present value of the cash flows. It just has a positive NPV. Let's go for 30% then. Again, the payback stays the same because the question we're asking is uh, how long does it take to get your money back? But as you can see, forget about this fraction because that related to uh, an earlier calculation. As you can see, the NPV now is negative. Because the discount rate is so high, the NPV is negative, but you make your money back within 2.5 years. So a combined decision rule would actually reject this project because it doesn't satisfy the dual criteria of making your money back and having a, a positive MPV. So that's 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 combinations, and I don't cover that in my textbook. I think I will definitely cover it though in uh, the next edition, because that is the reality of decision making in corporations. So you have um, uh, a small video on payback, and also some insights into what happens in practice. Thank you very much.